folks. This is T with Mountain Readiness. And uh, today we're going to be doing another one of our educator spotlights. We're going to be spotlighting today uh, Raymond Moore, a.k.a. The, the, the Kilted Prepper. That's, that's actually a mouthful. I don't know how many times I could say that over and over again in a row. Kilted Prepper, Kilted Prepper. Um, the Kilted Prepper, of course, uh, this guy is into everything. We've got bushcrafting. We've got food storage. We've got, uh, you know, survival. Um, the list goes on and on and on. So first off, it's great to talk to you, sir, and uh, appreciate you being here uh, with us today and looking real forward to uh, seeing you there in Harmony and in May at our event. So welcome. Thank you so much there, T. I appreciate it. And uh, fun to be on here with you. And I'm really looking forward to Mountain Readiness. This is going to be a lot of fun. I've been looking at a lot of the guests and everything. And you guys got a really full venue. And you're going to have some really cool classes. For sure. It's a jam-packed event. We want to make sure that everybody leaves with as much knowledge as they possibly can 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 leave with. Get your money's worth. Um and 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 of course, we want you hungry for more, but we want you full at the end of this at the end of this three day event. So, um, so the 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 kilted prepper. How did you become the kilted prepper? What is the backstory? Um, it's it's a rather interesting long story, but I'll keep it down to the short version. Uh, what I did is I I was very involved in the preparedness arena before, and I I went by another name. I then stepped back, you know, uh, God called me back. And so I thought, hey, I'm retiring and getting out of that and, and stuff. And it, and it is just interesting how things have progressed. And, uh, you know, God just kind of called me back into it. And, and it was interesting. I was uh, talking to my pastor because I, I really didn't want to do this. And, you know, me and my pastor prayed about it. And I go back home after after this after church, and within two hours, this uh, rather large organization reaches out to me and says, "Hey, man, we have some of your preparedness videos. You know, how about doing a couple interviews with us?" And it's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so I guess it just you know doors opened up, and I've been just going for it like crazy. Uh, I've it's, it's interesting. I on my YouTube channel. Um, I started really actively working it just in August, actually September, and I've already passed up the thousand subscriber mark. I've got a bazillion views. Awesome. Um, my my Facebook page is growing like crazy. I think I got like twenty one hundred or twenty two hundred, you know, friends and everything. Right, right. But what got me going was uh, I did DNA thing a long time ago, back in twenty fourteen and found out that I'm primarily Scottish and Scottish with some Scandinavian and a little bit of German and everything. But uh, I've always had this, this idea for kilts and Scotland and, and all that other stuff. And uh, during my retirement time, I started a Facebook group uh, called Real Men Wear Kilts. And that, that group now has over 23,000 members in it. And it's just, it's growing wow. still daily. We get about 10, 20 new members every day. And, and it's just all these people worldwide who just love wearing kilts or love Scotland or love Celtic or and everything like that. And so when I got back involved into the preparedness arena, it kind of was a natural thing, you know, because I wear I, I literally wear kilts every day, you know, well, not That's... recently because it's been rainy and yucky and cold and right, right. You know, that, that cold breeze, you know. Um, yeah, that's a game changer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I I just decided to go by the kilt and prepper because a lot of people here in town see me in my kilts all the time. And, and when I lived in Texas, I was wearing my kilts all the time. I migrated from Texas to Virginia. And so we live in the Roanoke right. Valley. And uh, and it's interesting. My my kin, my, my uh, ancestors actually came over from Scotland and then migrated to a place called Abs Valley, which is about 80 miles from here. And wow. so my my kin are are from this area. And right. my my grandpa and everything's from Virginia and told me all these stories about Virginia and how much he loved it and, and things. And so it's just interesting how we just happened to move to the Virginia right. area. 
and, and you know, it's an amazing and that that's an awesome story um we uh you know the the path is never a straight line right squiggly everywhere but somehow we always end up where we're meant to be at right yep. um yep. it's an amazing thing you know uh the lord definitely he he works through us he works through people around us to get us to where we're supposed to be sometimes kicking and screaming you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but here we are. That's a, that's an awesome story. Love it. Um, and the kilt, I, I do not own a kilt. I've wanted a kilt, but I actually want a kilt when I actually get to visit Scotland. I want to, I, I probably won't be able to run up that hill. I will slowly venture up that, those mountains, you know, but one day I am going to wear one and it will be in Scotland. Cause a lot of my background is also Scotland. Uh, of course, uh, my wife, Amber is almost all Scottish. Um, so, so we, that's, that's kind of one of our, our destinations we want to hit before it's all said and done. So, uh, well, but the kilt is, is the, the kilt is the, the clothing of warriors. And yes. so throughout the ages, kilts and warriors have always been, you know, synonymous. So, um, and it's just with my military background, I used to jump out of planes and eat snakes and all that other junk, you know, was part of special right. ops in the eighties and did all that crazy. I got, junk I got and... to ask, have you ever jumped out of a plane in a kilt? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever decide to do it, I mean, we got to know if you ever try this out, you got, we got to know. I don't think I want to surprise all the ladies, uh, you know, <laughs> there you go. good enough answer. So, um, now, my understanding is, too, is you are writing a book that is hopefully going to be coming out soon. Um, tell, tell us about that book. Um, it's, it's rather interesting because I, I love my dehydrator. And, and if people who've read my articles and watched my videos, I talk about dehydrating all the time. I think it's a very affordable thing that a lot of people can do versus a freeze dryer. A freeze dryer costs, like, geez, what, $3,000, $5,000. Where yes. a, a, an Excalibur dehydrator costs only what about three hundred bucks, but I've been using dehydrators now for about twenty years, and and I've dehydrated just about everything you can think of. And what I've when I've been doing my research, there's dehydrating recipe books out there, but they they're even though they're called the prepper dehydrator or this and that or survival dehydrating and. They really don't tell why. I mean, okay, so why do you want to dehydrate, you know, elderberry? And right. or why do you want to dehydrate this? Or why do you want to dehydrate that? And 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 it's all the same stuff, you know, basically, you know, fruit jerky or fruit, fruit roll up, beef jerky. And that's about the extent of of recipes that you see out there. And and so many people are missing out on so many really great things that they can use their dehydrator for to really create a, a wide variety of foods that will really serve you, help you. And dehydrated food will last 15 to 25 years, depending on how you package it and, and so forth. So it's a great way to, to basically create your own long-term survival food versus going out and buying some of this other survival food that in today's world, oh my goodness, is getting rather expensive. And so I would rather Same dehydrate versus, you know, going out and, you know, and by doing that, I'm, I'm by growing my own and raising my own and dehydrating my own, I know everything that's going into these foods and, and the nutritional value and so forth. And so my goal is to really create a book that is very, you know, very pro prepper survival homesteading versus a book just full of recipes on how to, to do this and do right. that. So, so, and this book too is going to, uh, uh, you you mentioned there's going to be some off the wall, interesting stuff that we're going to be dehydrating. What, what's a couple sneak peeks? Um, like one of the things I like sauerkraut. I, I right. love, I, I enjoyed using <laughs> dehydrated sauerkraut and people are going, what? And, uh, it's really, really good. I mean, you take a little bit of the sauerkraut and you, you kind of crunch it up my, over your eggs and it doesn't taste, okay. it, it doesn't have that sauerkraut taste, but it has that real zing and, right. or put it over fish, put it over chicken, uh, cr crunch it up into your salads and everything. And if you're looking for that real zing flavor, uh, it, it just really packs a punch and people who, who do dehydrating know that when you dehydrate, you concentrate the flavors 
Uh, another thing that I can't even keep on the shelves here because my, my family eats it like crazy is <laughs> pickle. I mean, uh, tomato chips. And oh, yeah. what I do is, you know, everybody grows tomatoes and he's got so many tomatoes, they don't know what to do with. I dehydrate them and I put different spices on it. And then I store it in, in large mason jars and, and everything. But my family just scarfs these down like potato chips and they're great for you. They're great for the kids right, and, right. and got my daughter who just like munches the crap out of them. And, you know, she just oh, loves yeah. them and, and things. So there's a lot of these things. And then uh, dehydrated pickles, dehydrated pickle chips. Those are good, too. You know, uh, it's amazing you bring that up, too. We uh we had a garden. It was a few years ago and it was about to rain. Uh, I was planting cucumbers and I was like, you know, forget it. I threw all the seeds just tossed them out there. Next thing you know, we had like 300 cucumbers, you know, and, uh, and Amber, of course, she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to make pickles, man. That, you know, we had about 200 jars of pickles. <laughs> the house, the house think like pickles for weeks, you know, um, we ended up just giving this stuff away. We, we, it made great Christmas presents, you know, Christmas, oh, yeah. birthdays here, here's some pickles, here's some pickles, but you know, uh, you will be doing, uh, Food to hydrate and that mountain readiness. Yep. So, um, and as and are you actually going to do some dehydrating at on I'm, site? I mean, I'm I can do some dehydrating on site, but dehydrating really takes you know about eight to twelve hours. So there will okay. be some things right. I will be doing, but some of the things that I really want to do to pass on practical information is uh, dehydrated eggs and how to yes. make your own powdered eggs. And uh, with the cost, I, I, I mean, I remember when uh, a number 10 can size of eggs, powdered eggs, were only at 15 bucks. They're now yeah. looking at 50, 60 bucks for a number 10 can of powdered eggs where people could actually make this themselves. It's super easy. There's several methods that you can use. And so many people are like freaked out. Oh man, salmonella. And like, no, man, right. if you do it right, okay. it'll, it'll turn out right. And then rehydrating the eggs you can do basically anything with with powdered eggs that you can do with real eggs except make, make meringue but i am right. tempted to actually dehydrate whites and see if i can make meringue from that um that would be amazing <laughs> pretty much anything you can you can do with eggs you can do with powdered eggs as well but it's well, a great way like, to you know, like you said yeah you know, like you said that's uh th this knowledge here you know this is stuff that 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 people has been doing forever it's just recently everybody's grown accustomed to convenience you know and you know oh i just drive i just drive down to the store and i'll pick me up a dozen of eggs and now here we are past couple years uh food shortage shortages the the supply chain disruptions um this this what you're bringing to the table here is knowledge that that saves money saves lives in the end you know i mean food being prepared with food that's probably number one on my list yeah, sure, you know, ammunition and, and everything else has a pay, but if you're not eating, you're not doing anything. So well, a lot, uh, a lot of things that people don't think about is something called food fatigue. And if you're living off of rice and beans and stuff, that gets really old really fast right. and it's not good for you. So you want to have a lot wow. of variety. And by learning how to dehydrate your own and creating all these, I mean, I make meals in jars. And what I do is any leftovers that I have from the meal, I'll throw in my dehydrator and then dehydrate it. And I keep a mason jar by my dehydrator that I then pour it into. And I just when I get a full jar, I'll add a couple bouillon cubes to it, seal it up with the oxygen absorber, and boom, I've got a meal in a jar. And there you have it. People just take their food, you know, stick it in a bowl, stick it in the refrigerator, and six months later it turns into a science experiment. So, yeah. you know, this is a great <laughs> way of 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 really taking benefit of your food and and making your budget stretch further versus throwing out a lot of food. I mean, people throw out so much food. Oh, yeah. The waste is... The hydra, they'd be good to go. Yeah. What if we could get to the point, you know, of, of, of almost zero waste, right? How much money, how much money we save just right there. Another good thing is, is, you know, your meals that you talk about in a bottle, I, I personally carry a few MREs in my get-home bag. You know, just in case you got to hoof, hoof shoe leather, you know, but we all know eating MREs, the result of that is long term is, is not sustainable, right? It's not something you want to do. It's a quick fix just to get you going, get you moving for a, a short period of time. Mm -hmm. This, this what you're talking about, I mean, 
uh, it's full game changer. You eat it. It's just like eating a meal. You just rehydrate it. You eat it. You're getting all those nutrients and and protein and all the things you need to, to survive. Well, why not make your own MRE? You know, right. start putting together your own MRE. You know, what's going to go into it? Uh, military MREs are not the greatest thing because they, if they get above 70 degrees, I believe, they start losing nutritional value. And so a lot right. of the MREs that are on the market today, a lot of their nutritional value has has gone out. And so basically, if there's people out there who are, who are going to survive on MREs, right. one, not too good, but they're, they're <laughs> right. basically going to have uh, rabbit starvation. You know, it, it's the same yes, thing. You get a bunch of, of rabbit, it just, you starve to uh, death. And right. so, on top uh, of uh, the, the uh, sodium content, you know, probably stroking out within the next couple of weeks. <laughs> so, so oh. no, it's what what you're bringing is great. I think uh, we can't wait to have you there at the event. Um, we're so glad that you decided to come on board with us. And um, hopefully you have that book done because that would be great to I, I'd love to get a signed copy. You will be signing copies, right? Oh, heavens, yes. Yeah, I'll be signing For copies sure. and everything. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm excited to. Uh, either I'm, I'm going to have it ready by the end of March or definitely by the time I'm going to Mountain Ready Preparedness. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kilted Prepper, we appreciate your time with us. We're looking forward to it. Folks, he's going to be there in person wearing a kilt, of course, uh, May 5th, 6th, and 7th. We can't wait to see you there. And uh, God bless, sir. Be safe. And uh, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, T. We'll see you. Goodbye. God bless. And kilt on. Kilt on. <laughs>